morning. Thanks for tuning in. You're watching the FNO show on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I'm Navneet Saluja D'Souza. Good morning, Navneet. I'm Agam Vakil. Here are the headlines. It's a subdued start to the trading day. The Nifty trades above the 100 DMA and close to the 11,200 mark. Open interest surged in Apollo Hospitals and Tata Global Beverages. Well, uh, we also have the FNO open interest, which has surged in Apollo Hospitals along with Tata Motors, which is the top gainer on the Nifty today. In futures are seeing a fresh longs. And Lupin, of course, is trading with declines after its fourth quarter earnings. Futures are seeing fresh short positions. Okay, that's about the top headlines for you at this hour, but let's also tell you what's happening with the markets right now. In fact, it's been a flat to positive start, I would call it. Nifty is just about trading around that level of 11,166, 160 actually currently. And let's not forget the sort of sell-off that one witnessed in the second half of the session in yesterday's trade. But Bank Nifty is trading in the negative territory. Bank Nifty is uh, trading around the levels of 28,600. Broader, broader markets continue to witness selling pressure, pull up the advanced decline. That gives you a better picture of the entire listed universe. So it is in favor of the declines right now. Almost two is to uh, three, three is to four is what we are witnessing in terms of market breadth. India volatility index that surged yeah. in yesterday's trade. So that's right now just about flattish. But remember, twin, around the 29 levels, it's quite uh, elevated right now. Important to uh, see the action today because uh, it is. Thursday and you've got the weekly options expiry day coming for Nifty as well as Bank Nifty and remember today the next expiry uh, the next Thursday that's May 23rd that's also the day when you get uh, the election results so the positioning now for the next week begins today so watch out for today's trading action uh, just uh, though the positions will build up but for May 23rd expiry as of now if you look at the maximum open interest it is at the 12,000 call and the 12,200 put followed by the 11,000 put and even if you look at the monthly expiry which is on May uh, 30th the range is actually spread out 1,000 points <coughs> maximum OI at 12,000 call and maximum OI on the put side is at the 11,000 but for today's day uh, watch out for that range of 11,150 we are around that level of 100 DMA if that gets breached once again and if T starts to trade below that probably it could trigger more selling pressure and on the upside 11,250 definitely remains important so Agam I think today's action though it's the expiry day we'll be watching out more for how the positions are on the option side mm -hmm. are being rolled over for the next expiry that remains key now yeah it's gonna be very very uh, uh, important uh, very interesting as well Namneet but we are just observers I'm sure a lot of people out there <laughs> will have put in a lot of money in there but uh, well uh, that said let's take a look uh, at all the stocks uh, which is looking at a substantial increase or a decrease in open interest so uh, well okay there you have it. our global beverages and this is a very interesting play we're going to address this one as well uh, it's up 12 and a half percent when it comes to open interest but its underlying isn't seeing too much traction uh, and uh, well curiously because it's clearly at an advantage when it comes to its deal with uh, Tata Chemicals. Apollo Hospitals is the other one. We have Petronet LNG along with Manapuram Finance also uh, looking at an increase in open interest and Havels India is the other one which remains in focus. So we'll be keeping an eye on that one. In terms of stocks which are looking at a decline in open interest uh, and there will one, not too much. Uh, yeah, well, Chennai Pentro, perhaps Kotak Mahindra Bank, but uh, not really. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the whole on Tata Global Beverages of, along with this deal with Tata Chemicals, of course, been, which has led to that surge in OI and, of course, several other counters too. Hmm. Well, Agam's already highlighted most of those counters, but few stocks that we would be taking views from our experts today will be Petronet LNG, which has reacted on the downside to its numbers, which definitely looked weak. The margins uh, contracted, revenues were down 17%, and the net profit was also down 22%. The other one, of course, due to the deal, Tata Global as well as Tata Chem, both these stocks have reacted positively, so we'll take views. Remember, these stocks have been underperforming. In last one month, we had seen some bit of underperformance from both these stocks, and Lupin is the other one. The earnings came out yesterday. I think the commentary was not that gung-ho. The stock, uh, in fact, is down 10% for the week and it has been trading below its key moving averages and brokerages like Macquarie and Jefferies, they've maintained their underperformed rating on this one. That's right. Well, uh, we get in our experts for the show, but here's a reminder if you have any queries regarding futures and options, you can call us on 0224540441 or of course, the easier way to do this is to write to us on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube with the RSPQ hashtag.
Let's get in our experts for the day then. Gaurav Bissa of LKB Securities will join us in just a bit. And we also have Mr. K. Subramaniam of Altamount Capital joining us on the show. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, good morning to you and thanks for joining in. Uh, what do you make of the indices? Uh, would you, well, avoid taking any trade at all as we move into the week before election results? How are you viewing the movement on the indices and what would your play be? Well, morning, Agam. Uh, I think uh, I would say simply that when you visit a casino, you are obviously tempted to take a position. So it's very easy to you know say that remain out of a trade. But it's very tempting, and given the fact that uh, we are now getting into some uh, pretty uh, you know in the, the, the next week is going to be pretty exciting. So I've got a trade here, uh, which uh, I hope uh, will be of some use uh, to deal with the volatility. Wherein uh, it's a weekly calendar spread. Uh, now I don't know exactly how. The, I mean, the basis is that uh, now we are at a technically at a very critical stage. I think 11,000, 30, 30, 40 is a 200 EMA. I think that's the level from where we broke out. Uh, I think one, one and a half months back. Unfortunately, we're back there. So I'm assuming that this support is going to hold, irrespective of the outcome of uh, the elections and uh, probably. Uh, uh, the technical at least we are poised. The, uh, we are placed at a point where the bounce is more likely. But of course, events are going to uh, detect uh, the ex exact trend. So I am recommending buying of 11,150 strike put for the current week. That is the one which is expiring today. That's quoting around 25. But correspondingly, buy 11,200 strike May 23rd call. That's quoting around 240. Now the the genesis of this uh, the, this uh, the, uh, strategy is that uh, in the eventuality of the market uh, going down today. The, the the put of the current uh, the, uh, the 11,150 should uh, I think give some decent uh, cushion to the call which I am buying for the current coming week. So my cost of 240 might actually might go down, but in the eventuality of the market going up, which is what I am expecting, then obviously things uh, looks much better. So I am keeping the target of 400. In fact, it could be extended much beyond that given the volatility that we are likely to see. And uh, but also recommend a stop loss of 190 uh, just uh, to be on the safer side that we don't end up losing too much. So this is a broad strategy which I think uh, uh, to deal with the volatility which I thought uh, might be used to uh, to uh, you know put in a trade uh, in what should be a very very exciting week. Okay, so Mr. Subramaniam is recommending a weekly calendar spread. This has a total outgo of 265. He's recommended a target of 400 and stop loss of 190. Okay, that's about um, the strategy on Nifty, Mr. Subramaniam. But what about individual stock futures for the day? Are there any stocks that are looking good? Yeah, Navneet, uh, again, playing it very safe. Uh, my assumption is that uh, in the eventuality of uh, anything uh, hap uh, I mean, uh, happening on the positive side, these are the stocks which will uh, finally uh, do well. So uh, buying, uh, keeping a buy on um, Infi, that 720 strike call, that's quoting around 21. Keeping a target of 35 and one could keep a stop loss of uh, 15. And this has been in some sort of a range right now. I think the IT stocks might come back into focus. We have seen some recent correction. And the times of uncertainty, these are the stocks normally tend to uh, do well. And the second one is uh, buy, a plain vanilla buy of the 2300 strike uh, call of uh, HDFC Bank. That of course the bank, if the, the banking stocks are going to be uh, hugely volatile, the PSU banks have uh, been on the receiving end. So that could give some sort of fillip to the private sector banks, the appetite for buying so the private sector banks will obviously be higher. And HDFC bank obviously be one of the top preferred ones. And uh, technically also I think 2200, 2250, we have seen some decent amount of put rating. So uh, the st stock remaining uh, positively bias is more higher. So one could possibly uh, buy this 2300 strike call, quoting, it's quoting at around 55 to 58, keeping a target of 90 because if the, the eventuality of a jump coming about, uh, the target should be achieved fast. But to be on the safer side, uh, also recommend a stop loss of 45. Okay. So those are some of those stock calls from Mr. K. Subramaniam. I'm told that uh, Gaurav is here with us. So uh, Gaurav, good morning to you as well. Let's start by talking about uh, how you're approaching the indices, Hello. especially keeping into mind that uh, we are moving into a very important week uh, considering the elections. How are you uh, well, placing your bets now? Gaurav, this question was for you, if you can hear me. Uh, well, we wanted to know how you're placing your bets, so keeping in mind that we will have the outcome of the elections next week, Thursday. 
Okay, I think we do have a problem with uh, Gaurav. Uh, uh, I don't think he can reach uh, hear us. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about, well, some of those stocks that we were addressing right now. And let's pull up uh, something like Tata Global Beverages because uh, that's what we, what we had intended to talk about. The curious thing about Tata Global Beverages is that, uh, well, while it stands to gain, considering the, the Tata Chemicals Consumer Product Division comes into uh, play here, in, in comes get, gets merged with Tata Global Beverages, Tata Global Beverages, which will eventually be called Tata Consumer Products, uh, stands at a little bit of an advantage, but that's clearly not playing out in its stock price right now, considering it's looking at a half percent decline. Its open interest has, however, surged as much as 12 percent, and it is one of the top gainers as far as open interest is concerned today. If we can take a look at how Tata Global Beverages has done over the past, uh, well, three months, uh, six months, perhaps a year, and uh, you know, compare it to what kind of trends it actually throws up. Uh, we can, we can have that on your screen, there you have it. On a one-month basis, it's come off by around 5%, not too much correction, certainly not as much as, as, as some of its peers, but on a three-month basis too, well, uh, I would say it's languishing around the same levels, uh, uh, not too much change, even though it has advanced by 6.5%, I wouldn't call that a significant uh, you know, appreciation in its price. Six-month basis, again, it's come off by around 11%. Okay, I'll take this up with Mr. Subramaniam. Uh, so how would you address Tata Global now? Uh, any cues that's, uh, that the stock is throwing up for you in terms of trade towards long or short? Well, I mean, this is stock has broadly been an underperformer and uh, probably not, uh, I mean, the, the, despite the fact that we are seeing some uh, open interest surge on the back of this uh, news flow where your merger is involved. So there are too many ifs and buts. Uh, so I would probably give it a pass and uh, not, uh, since the stock has not done much on the upside and uh, the downside 185, 190 could be uh, seen as a safe, a safe uh, you know, zone to enter. So for the time being, I would not be tempted to enter into any trade in Tata Global. Before I go across to Gaurav, so very quickly, Mr. Subramaniam, but Tata Chemicals has reacted positively to the deal. In fact, Global was also saw a gap up opening, but I think there was some selling pressure from the top, which came in 7% high for Tata Chem. Would you take a trade here? This one too was an underperformer in the last one month. No, I don't think uh, even Tata Chemical would be a preferred trade because this open interest can vanish and uh, the price could end up uh, on the other side. So I would, uh, I mean, both the counters, I would probably uh, not uh, be tempted to enter any trade. Okay, so Mr. Subramaniam is giving a pass to both these stocks which are in focus today, Tata Chemicals as well as Tata Global Beverages. I believe Gaurav Bissa is back with us. Hi, Gaurav, good morning. Uh, hope the audio is clear now. Uh, how are you positioning yourself today considering uh, the positions for the next expiry on Thursday on May 23rd when the general election results come out will begin today? Would you have any sort of trade to take today? Uh, for intraday uh, perspective, I would wait for a dip in Nifty. We have a, a, a strong uh, supported area of 11,100 to 11,120. This is where the 100 DM is also placed. Uh, the 200 DM is placed at 11,050-60 levels. 11,000 put option commands, highest concentration, 11,100 put is seeing this amount of writing. So small dip and it would become quite lucrative. Uh, the reason that I'm waiting for a dip, uh, we have seen uh, strong reversals coming uh, from levels of 11,250 to 11,270. This sort has to be uh, favorable. And uh, since the market is not doing too much, it's always better to wait for an if you test the lower band of the channel, which comes around levels of 11,140, 150. So a dip in the market would be lucrative. For Bank Nifty, uh, it's uh, been underperforming. Uh, these traders can buy here uh, above level of. Uh, 20,635 to 20,640 above these levels. I have a 60 point stop loss play for 150 point target. Uh, that would be uh, more or less the kind of trade we would be advising the clients. Okay, so that's uh, Gaurav's okay. strategy on the indices. But Gaurav, if we talk about stocks, uh, anything that looks interesting to you? To you? Uh, there are a couple of stocks uh, uh, among the option trades. Some, if you want, we are just spotted uh, just tell where it's looking uh, as if it will break out. One can buy a 600 call option, or probably if somebody wants to play for entire trade, keep a one, keep one percent stop loss on the upside. 592, 595 is what I would be uh, expecting in just a. Uh, another name would be Access Bank, that is a, a sell and rise candidate. Uh, the reason I'm talking of sell and rise in the morning, it was quoting at 727, 728. It's currently at 721. So any jump towards 725, 726 can be sold. It's given a breakdown. A decent number of shorts are seen getting built. Bank Nifty is looking. Uh, dicey as long as trading below 28640. 
So and that premise it can go towards 710. One can uh, keep a stop loss of 730, 740 and sell it. Indian Bank, uh, it's from the bullish harmonic pattern around 224, 225. Uh, that can be used as a stop loss on the upside. Uh, it can head towards 240. Okay, so those are some stock specific ideas coming in from Gaurav this morning. Uh, Gaurav, I'm just coming back to you on Lupin. The counter was weak yesterday after it posted its uh, March quarter numbers. And today the brokerages too have not been that enthused, though there was a mild bit of uh, expansion when it came to the EBITDA margins. So Macquarie and Jefferies, they've both maintained their underperformed rating, 4% lower for today's session as well. And the stock's now down almost 10 to 11% for this week. Uh, Traders who would have shorted this, what would you advise them? What should the target be now on the downside? For people who already uh, shorted, I think uh, it's time to book some amount of profits. Uh, the support for the stock is uh, seen at levels of 725 to 730. Uh, it made a low towards 735. So we have already tried to touch the uh, immediate support area. And I don't think there's too much to be uh, uh, taken from uh, the current levels. Fresh breakdown would be seen below levels of 720, but uh, for timing, people already shot it earlier. It's time to book some of the profits or probably play up with a trailing stop loss. But at these levels, I would not be too keen on holding aggressive shorts or creating fresh ones. Okay, well, that's the view on uh, Lupin. Among the others that we want to address uh, is also, well, Petronet LNG. And uh, we've been talking about, uh, you know, Petronet LNG of late because of, uh, well, of course, the sustained weakness today is down 2.2%. There's open interest increase of around 12%. If we can pull up the, the last three-month chart for Petronet LNG, we can get an idea of what that stock has been doing. Uh, so it has advanced, but over the last maybe one odd week, it has, there's been a never so slight decline coming through for Petronet LNG, and that could be a matter of concern. Uh, it's, uh, as I've suggested, it's currently at 228. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, is there any, uh, well, trade here? We're clearly looking at some short build-up here. What would you do with this one? Uh, can you, can, could you please repeat the stock? A Petronet, a Petronet LNG. No, I would not be uh, keen on taking any trade. Okay, not keen on taking any trade. Gaurav, what about you? Would you have a view on Petronet LNG? It's down 2% in today's session. There is some build-up which is seen in terms of open interest. Well, if you look at uh, the broader uh, charts, you'll see it's been trading between the range of 200 to 240 broadly. Uh, multiple, multiple times it has seen bounce back from 200 levels. Uh, currently, it's trading near the 200 DMA, which is placed around levels of 226. Uh, if somebody wants to short, if somebody intends to short, uh, the recommendation would be to short below 225, 226, keep a stop loss of 229.5, 230. On the downside, 220, 218 is what I would be looking at. At 228, I would not be too keen. All right. Well, on that note, uh, we move in and take a bunch of queries. We have a question from uh, Rajesh Roy uh, right at the top. Uh, well, he wants a view on the 28,800 call. Now, I'm assuming this is a Nifty Bank call. Uh, let's pull up that specific option and uh, take a look at where it is currently at around 882. That's the premium. We must also remember that the bank Nifty, uh, well, the spot is at 28,000. Uh, 600 odd levels so it's about 200 points away before it actually goes in the money and I'm not certain if Rajesh wants to buy or sell this call option but uh, I'm going to take this up with our experts uh, so uh, again uh, Gaurav this one is for you would you buy this call would you sell this call what would your advice be for Rajesh as I mentioned a few minutes back uh, the uh, bullishness or the uh, buying of call options or maybe on futures part uh, should be carried out if bank nifty trades above level of uh, 28,635, 28,640 spot levels. Till that does not happen, I would not be too keen. Uh, you know, it's been bank nifty has not been doing too much, and uh, when it does not do too much, and if you want to spot opportunities, you need to reduce the time frame. This is how you can work. Uh, in that case, if you look at the 15 minute charts, uh, it's a very small chart, right? So, but 15 minute charts, it's forming a bearish flag. It's given a small breakdown below bearish flag. Uh, if it trades below levels of 28,575, uh, uh, we can see some more slippages that can be seen in Bank Nifty and can fall by the 70, 80 points. As such, it's already quite vulnerable. So, my uh, suggestion would be this particular call option should be kept on hold by only when Bank Nifty trades above level of 28,640. 
Okay, that's the view coming in on Bank Nifty. Krishna writes to us on YouTube and he wants a technical view on Goodrich Industries. He's asking, can we expect some bit of pullback rally and uh, what could be the short term target for the stock? Mr. Subramaniam, if somebody's taken a position uh, into Goldridge Industries, what target would you advise in the near term? Well, it's been again a gross underperformer, seen some pretty heavy shots and uh, also breached some critical levels. So any anybody who's done a short probably could cover the position. It's a currently in a, in a heavily oversold zone. So uh, I think uh, time to take the you know cover the shorts and uh, wait for an upside which could come about. I think a bounce could take it like right up to levels of 460 thereabouts. But uh, that would be again a point where one could short. But uh, you know so current levels uh, clear in oversold uh, trade uh, oversold zone. So shorts ideally should uh, cover it. Cover their positions. So, Brahmanim, I think our viewer has uh, taken a long position, if I'm not mistaken. So, you're expecting 460 on the upside if the pullback happens, right? See, the stock has uh, the potential to uh, go up on some sort of a short covering rally, but uh, again, it's, it's in such an oversold zone. So, I would still recommend probably put a stop loss of around 430 thereabouts and uh, hold on to the position. Okay, well, uh, let's talk about uh, another stock which has been a clear outperformer when it comes to the indices and the broader markets, and by that I mean Bajaj Finance. We have a viewer query, Anshul Goel wants to know how to trade Bajaj Finance ahead of results. So let me first start by addressing what we can expect in Bajaj Finance in terms of uh, earnings. So we are expecting net interest income uh, to grow by a whopping 38%, uh, not unlike what we have seen for Bajaj Finance in the previous I would I would say I don't know even remember the seven eight quarters um, could be more than that and profit is likely to rise as much as 52 percent so there's no doubt about the fact that we are expecting another very very strong quarter for Bajaj finance and uh, we're gonna keep an eye on the uh, well assets under management to growth for a rural housing consumer that's as far as far as your AUM is concerned in terms of growth trends too so uh, you know, take, taking that into consideration, uh, it has been perhaps a shorter's nightmare, if I can call that. Every time someone thinks that Bajaj Finance has been, well, in overbought zone or it's extremely richly valued and gone and shorted, they've got their hands burnt. It's currently at around 3,040. Ahead of earnings, I reckon that to a certain extent the markets must have factored in uh, the very strong growth performance for Bajaj Finance in, uh, well, the 3,040 rupees per share, the price at which it is currently trading at. It's up 1.3% today as well. So open interest up as much as 4.3%. And we must remember that while the Nifty has come off quite substantially in the last two odd weeks, Bajaj Finance, it may have come below the mark of 3,000, but it has moved back above that. And the real question is, what do we do from here? Where do we go? And how can one trade Bajaj Finance, keeping all these factors into consideration, the, the ones that I've spoken about. So Gaurav, I come to you on uh, Bajaj Finance. What would your approach be here? Well, to be honest, uh, we were uh, positive at lower levels for the reason that if you look at daily charts, uh, uh, you would see that it's trading a rising channel. Uh, it had a support at level of uh, 2850 uh, odd levels, 2850. It has reversed from those levels. So right now, when you're talking about uh, good numbers that can be expected, I think that has been taken by a street earlier, and we have seen a strong reversal coming in. It's up uh, around 10% or not, or so, if I'm not wrong. So from here, uh, it's the middle of the range. I would not be too keen. Probably uh, any dip towards the level of 2980, 2970, one can play with a call option. I am an advocate of buying an option where the call put ahead of numbers instead of uh, playing with futures because it's quite risky. So if it dips below a uh, level of uh, 2980, 2970, one can buy a, a 3000 amount call option for the uh, event. Uh, but uh, futures, I would be avoiding it. Okay, before we move to another query for the day, I just want to pull up the Nifty Pharma Index. There's been a uh, sharp sell-off that has just come in in all the pharma companies. And you've got something like Sun Pharma, which is down. The Pharma Index, by the way, it's the top sectoral loser, down 3%. Look at that. 
Selling pressure just come in in the last few minutes of trade. Seven percent lower for Sun Pharma. Lupin is down. We address that stock. Cadilla is down four and a half percent. Glenmark has seen cuts of nearly three percent. And most of the constituents, in fact, all the constituents of the Nifty Pharma index are now trading in the red territory. Just to uh, refresh your memories, there was a U.S. lawsuit in which seven Indian drug makers were named for inflating prices, and this has been there since 2014 because of which they were pricing pressures uh, the, in the entire industry and the which was also visible how the earnings were being posted in the last four years. But uh, Mr. Subramaniam, if I could come to you, uh, the sort of fall that we are seeing now on all these pharma stocks, is there anything that you would take a trade on? No, I don't have any uh, specific trade on any other pharma stocks. Gaurav, what about you? Would you take a bet? On pharma stocks, uh, I don't think so. As I mentioned, that uh, many of these names have uh, broken crucial support area, and they have now become a sell on rise candidate for the time being. So I wouldn't buy here, but probably any jump in these names can be good shorting opportunities. Do not try to pick bottoms in these names because there have been multiple supports that have been reached. Even if there's a bounce back that we, actually, uh, we see in these names, it is likely to be met with ferocious selling. So for timing, avoid buying. Okay, Dian Bhattacharya has a question on HTFC Limited. He wants to know uh, what can be done with it or what's your take. Mr. Subramaniam, I come back to you. HTFC Limited, how would you trade this one? Well, this again, I think uh, going by the, I mean, it, this is also like closing, I mean, trading at uh, very much near the, some sort of at, uh, near term support levels. But uh, I would probably may be tempted to buying a 2000 strike call for a possible upside. I don't know the, exactly the premium, but uh, I think that, that is a trade probably one could take. Maybe keep a stop loss uh, closer to about uh, 5 to 10 rupees and uh, play for an upside of 30 to 40 rupees. Because as I mentioned, SGFC Bank, which I gave, I think uh, the similar uh, note, uh, and HDFC also could see buying at, uh, you know, on any up upward momentum that comes about in the market. Okay, Ryan Vishal has written to us. He shorted PCJ uh, May futures at 111. I think he's in the money. Uh, pull up that uh, future. I think it's somewhere about 106 right now. 103 actually. So he's sitting with good amount of profit here. He wants to know if he can exit at current levels. Uh, Gaurav, considering it's a beaten down counter and also a high beta counter, since he's making money, what would you recommend him to do? Book profits or stay put? Like you mentioned, it's a, a very uh, extended name. It's a very high beta name. I think if he's making money, it's uh, best to book profits. If you look at the daily charts, uh, the uh, averages are also, uh, immediate averages are also placed at levels of 104, 103. And uh, the swing that is, made, that is also coming around level of 104. So I think uh, you you can make another 2 rupees from here, but uh, uh, with the kind of um, quality I've already seen, it's better to book profits and uh, switch to some other trade. Okay, I think we have time to take just two more queries, so we're going to very quickly take them up. We have one on Nitesh, uh, pardon me, Nitesh uh, has a question on Ashok Leyland, the 95 call. Uh, again, uh, you know, Ashok Leyland has been, well, uh, a very, very dicey counter, and I reckon that, uh, well, if, uh, you know, Nitesh wants to buy the Ashok Leyland uh, call, he's, he's likely going to make a, a loss, but if he wants to sell it, that's a question we, we can, could pose with our, uh, our, our experts. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, uh, would you at least go ahead and sell uh, the, the 95 Ashok Leyland call? Would that make sense? I would uh, think so because uh, a clear underperformer and uh, what I don't know how much the premium, but whatever the premium is there, I think worth pocketing. Any any uh, substantial upside from current levels looks very unlikely. Okay, one more query coming in from Shakun, and he has a query on Jubilant Foodworks. He's holding 1280 call, which is out of the money. Currently, the stock's trading at around 1230. His premium that he's paid is about 51 and the current premium on that strike of 1280 call has fallen to levels of 37. He wants to know what to do with this position. Should he hold or book losses here? Gaurav Bissa, what would you advise? The stock was up yesterday 3% post the numbers but some bit of selling pressure has been seen in today's trade. Well, uh, after uh, its number, I think it's already moved up a little bit. Uh, it is not trading at the crucial uh, area. I would recommend that if he is holding on to the call options, uh, keep a, a stop loss of 1220 on the spot side. Once 1220 is broken, exit the call option because once 1220 is taken out, there is a chance that it may slip towards a level of 1200 and below. So for me, I use a stop loss and then hold. Okay, guys, uh, on that note, we are going to uh, well wrap the show. So I'm going to take a moment to thank both our experts, uh, Mr. Subramaniam and Gaurav, for joining us and taking us through their views, as well as solving some of our viewers' queries.
for more updates on the FNO space, you can also check our website, bloombergprint.com, specifically the futures and options pages. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the FNO show, but stay tuned to Bloomberg Quinn for more news and updates.